the only podcast that actually does know Jack. This is Bombers. Hey everybody, welcome to episode number of season smaller number of the bombers i'm bomber different number five five I, my, five my brain legit stopped there i'm bomber number five anthony aka deg with me today is my microphone just fell down with me today is bomber number three zyber aka zyber this is this is going so great. It's, if it's, if Shay was here, he'd be all like, "Ah oh, man, it's just no." Oh, great, terrible. Great, greatest episode! Like this is a complete mess. I can't believe I'm here being Shay. I don't know. That was that was a great interpretation. <laughs> whatever. Um. Yeah. There is no Shay. Um. I guess it was his his turn this week to die. Uh. So yeah, Shay's dead. Uh. Welcome. We'll welcome him back next week. Yeah. I just have to go find the diamond first to resurrect him with. Uh, you could always just find, like, a, um, wish ring, or, or just a, a staff of wish. Or seven dragon balls. That one seems, like, I'd rather collect a single diamond than collect seven different balls. Yeah, but I, if we have trackers for the balls. We don't have a tracker for diamonds. I guess it has, what, and it has to be a diamond of a certain GP worth, doesn't it? Which, probably which probably means that it, you can't just like get any old like industrial diamond it needs to be a, a full-on thing there's probably carrots involved i don't, I don't know there's always steal someone's engagement ring there's carrots involved in in gems isn't there yep i gotta have good eyesight to look at those gems a carrot is a root vegetable oh anyway, it's uh... it's gonna be an episode <laughs> thanks for sticking with us <laughs> Let me just revive this episode here real quick. Yeah. Would... With some bombastic news. Dragon Ball. Everyone's test. favorite everyone's mm-hmm. favorite part of the episode. My favorite. Where we talk about news that is bombastic. Oh yeah. Hey yeah. <laughs> Hey Anthony. <laughs> what? Did you know that we've been talking about our website for like at least a month now? I've I known that been f- track. for at least a month. It's definitely gotta have been more than a month. <laughs> Two bumps? Nah, I don't know. But anyway, yes, if you want to see everything there is to know and do with the Bombers, you can go to thisbombers.com, where we can learn, or you can learn, I already know everything. Dude, I know Jack. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the website and quiz you on it right now. Alright, but anyways, you can learn a bit about us, you can learn about our podcast, you can learn about our Discord community, and you can learn... All about our streaming on twitch.tv, whatever it is. Hey, Zyber. Here's yeah. here's a, a quiz question from the website that you and the kids at home can play along. Uh, can you tell me how many years of IT knowledge Zyber has? Uh, what did I put, like 63 or something? <laughs> well, The 37? It's neither of those, but... Tell us in the Discord how many years. Find out. This is bombers.com slash one of the pages that tells you about people. I think it made it like <laughs> for how al- long it's been since the internet was invented. It's almost like you can. Or at least World Wide Web. It's almost like you can go on the website and, and figure it out, but here we are. Uh, it's, no, dude, I can't do that. That's cheating. Crowd, Gosh. Cr- crowd engagement. <laughs> First person, anyway, you... first person to tell me how many years of IT knowledge Zyber has gets a, a hearty pat on the back. They get a Xbox copy of oh, Borderlands, Borderlands 3. 3. Oh no. Let's not do that again. Where you can play with the other person who got an Xbox copy of Borderlands 3. <laughs> Whoever that was, because we don't remember. What other cool news yes. is there? Well, also on our website you can see a link to our Patreon where you can become best friends or friends of the show. And why would you want to do that? Well, besides just because you love us so much that for some reason you'd want to give us some money, 
you also get some perks, including being able to listen to pre and post shows where we re- we just start recording ourselves before we even start the episode to you know talk about what we're gonna do uh, for um... the episode, and then we keep recording. After we're done with the episode, so you can hear us complain about how terrible yeah, our episode was. And boy, was. howdy, do I gotta tell you, the post show for this week is really good. I, I had a good time recording that with you, Zyber. Sure thing, time traveler. <laughs> Look forward to that uh, coming out on Wednesday to the Patreon for you friends and best friends of the show. Yep, so typically the pre-show comes out Friday night, Saturday, like that. Saturday morning, Friday night, is something like that. Saturday morning, before before Monday. It's definitely before Monday when when the episode yeah. comes out. So, if you're listening to this and you are a friend or best friend of the show, or is it just it's both? It's, it's, if, if, if you if you're giving us money, it's both. Okay, good. You get to listen to us talk more then because you should have listened to the pre-show already. What are you doing here? They're here because they listen to it. Hey, so Zyber, are you doing um? Picking up a, a Twitch slot, or are you still debating that? Uh, yeah, I'm planning on it. Uh, at least every other Wednesday. Well, there you go. Breaking news. Zyber do... Breaking news. Zyber, a.k.a. Zyber, yeah. likes playing horror games because it doesn't creep him out as much. So if you want to hear or watch Zyber laugh at scary games... I will shall say scary instead of horror because Bioshock is not a horror game. Bioshock is a horror game. It's not game. a horror game. What is it then? The best first person shooter since Half Life 2? Uh, okay, Piddle. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you can watch me on Wednesdays. I believe this coming cool. Wednesday I'll be doing it. So, yeah. Cool. And if any of you have any like other suggestions for horror slash scary games for me to play, tell me, and I will consider it. Yep. Yeah, that's that's Wednesdays. All you can you can listen to the post show, while that'll be just as scary as him him playing Bioshock. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, Anthony is highlighting this text because I still need to make a shout out to our current friends and best friends of the show. So, shout out to friends Haley, Aaron, Minted Peas, and Reaper, and best friends Anne and Rob. Thank you so much for Yay, supporting us. Thank you. All right, what what other news is there to Nothing. talk about? But there are some games that are coming out. Not really. What a slow week we have ahead of us, folks. I was scraping the bottom of the barrel to even come up with these. Um, t- so there was like four or five games we saw, and three of them are re-releases, yeah, basically. It's, it's a whole bunch of, this got ported to iOS and Android, and this got ported to PC from console, and this got ported from console to PC. Did I say that one? From PC to console? I don't know. Point is... Yes, it, it, oh, it was both way. ways, and boring. The only actual new games coming out, March thirty first. Both of these, uh, Moss Book Two for PSVR, which I didn't know there was a Moss Book One. So, yeah, it was one of those earlier VR games, at least for PlayStation. Oh, I yeah, I guess it is just PlayStation. PSVR, yeah. You have a PSVR. Have you played Moss? Yep, so at one point, well, I don't remember if I actually paid for Moss because I'm pretty sure it was one of those free games that they had like last year at one point when they just gave us a bunch of free PSVR games. And it's pretty interesting. So instead of like the normal VR system where you're like in a, you know, imaginary room that you can walk around in, instead you're kind of like a god watching over this mouse that's moving around. So um, you can control the mouse with you know, a controller normally. Otherwise, you can, like, move objects on the paths and such that the mouse can walk around in to help her get through an area. So you're actually kind of, like, just sitting down <laughs> on the ground and then... So is it like a like a puzzle? Just interacting with stuff in front of you. Yeah, it's, it's like a puzzle game. Interesting. So it's pretty cool. The only issue is that it's a pain to set up. Like, I had to move the camera from the top of the TV to the bottom so it actually sees me sitting on the uh-huh. ground. I guess if you had, like, a desk or something, you could try that. You just sit on it. 
So I know like uh, I stopped playing it and then I moved, you know, <laughs> places. <laughs> so it would be a pain to set back up. If it's playable on the PSVR two, that would be fixed because then I don't have to have a camera yeah. to move since the it's headset itself internal just internal shows tracking. Where I'm, at. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the PSVR two myself as well. Yeah, but anyone that's enjoyed the first mods, they're most likely going to enjoy mods too. So have fun, you small people like me that have PSVR. <laughs> all, all two of you, the other ones being Himaru and Shay. <laughs> yes. And then also same day, uh, Weird West, a game uh, being published by Devolver Digital. So they usually put out some pretty good games. Uh, a action role play, like third person top down sort of dealio uh coming it's it's a western action but adventure weird. game uh, that was <laughs> not weird that was expected honestly at this point yeah it looks like it it looks like it has yeah, a lot of well, interesting like um monsters and werewolfy type of just again weirdness going on in it Cowboys versus werewolves? It'll never work. Uh, yeah. Those, those are the games. Told you it wasn't much. Keep keep playing the games that came out. I'm kind of disappointed. Keep, keep playing the games that came out last week because, I mean, a lot of good stuff recently came out. So, play those. Play those. Yep. I know I'm pretty excited to be playing Kirby, which I probably have had had done by now you listening to how, this um yeah as of us recording how how how, how far into it are you like how's that going give me give, give me impressions oh uh, we did it what <laughs> it was pretty great yep Haley just uh sucker punched everyone as kirby and i stabbed people with my spear as band so it was pretty good Not... then we killed then we killed a guy was it worth um the 60 dollar price tag yeah, okay. totally. Good to know. Are you thinking that it's a game that you will ever go back to, or are you pretty much done with it once you've finished it? Uh, Kirby games, I don't really usually go back to them, so probably not yeah. with this one either. It's like, even Mario Odyssey, it took me like a couple years to do it, and that was just because there was something else to play. A lot play. of problem right now, I'll tell you that. Definitely not. Uh, yep. Well, that that is all the news to talk about. So let's. <laughs> so well, actually, no. That's, let's. That's all the news to talk about. So let's talk about <laughs> some news. Hey, it's the weekly bomb where we come up with news <laughs> headlines and determine if it's a bomb or the bomb. Uh, honestly, kind of a slow week for news too. Like slow week for releases. Slow week for news. But I did, uh, one cool thing that did happen this past week is uh, CD Projekt Red did announce that they are working on The Witcher 4. So that's exciting for a certain subset of people that like The Witcher role-playing games. Uh, Honestly, I expect that they'll probably get an uptick in interest uh, just off the back of the Netflix series. Yeah, I mean, people have... Thought that the reason they're doing another Witcher yeah. game is because of that, um, which I don't know if that's necessarily true. I mean, they must have been working on this long enough before announcing it. Well, hopefully. Well, it depends. I mean, the way that announcements work anymore these days, they announce all kinds of games way too early. Are they announcing that the game exists, or are they announcing that they're going to start working on the game? Well. Uh, an interesting thing about this one, uh, since you bring that up, um, there was uh, some tweets from uh, Bart Ronsky, who is uh, a, a former employee, at least, of CD Projekt Red, um, talking about uh, some of the development of the previous Witcher games, because CD Projekt Red did... did switch from the red engine to unreal engine 5 uh they're working in in unreal engine for the uh, production of witcher 4 
So tell me, Anthony, why would they want to switch from their own proprietary engine to an uh, engine that a lot of people Well, uh, use? Bart here, former former employee of CD Projekt Red, had some insight into that. Um, I can tell you some insight into that without even needing Bart's information. Uh, the Red Engine doesn't always work very well, frankly. I mean, look at what happened with uh, Cyberpunk, which was built on the Red Engine. Look at the initial early release builds of Witcher 3. Which didn't work very well, and they had to they had to do a bunch of stuff to, yeah. to fix it and make it work. And and Bart uh, Bart here, my friend Bart, uh, gave some insight into that. Um, let me read these quotes. Uh, he said, uh, "Every game they dropped the whole engine, rewrote it from scratch, hoping this time it will be better and work. But then, due to crunch, hacked the heck out of it with it not being maintainable or usable at all." Now they would do it again, as CD Projekt did not have, or as Cyberpunk did not have the systems of Witcher 3. So it was better to just drop the ball and use something with a solid base and not chase its tools and features. Gameplay slash open world things need to be written again anyway. So, realistically, they didn't actually have a red engine. They had just been building new engines for every single game because their engineer is never good enough even for the game is being built with <laughs> yeah they, they they would work on it they would work on an engine get it built up and then get close to release and just slap something together to get out it for release <clears throat> release it it'd be broken they'd fix it and then they'd start work on the next game and they'd go well, that last engine didn't work out, and it was broken, and we had to fix it. So let's start over again in order to make one that works. And then they'd get close to release, run out of time, slap it together, release it. It'd be broken. They'd have so to this... fix it. And then they'd go, well, that last okay. engine didn't work, so let's start over again. It was again. like some <laughs> weird death loop there, in. So, yeah. Yeah, it was like... like a... This isn't the only company that's had this issue. Like, I remember even Square Enix was basically building a new engine for every single Final Fantasy game they made which a lot of people assumed was why it took so long to make games. Well, it turns out, no, it's not. But anyway, <laughs> Square, yeah. even Square like stopped doing that. They're all like, we're going to use Unity and Unreal Engine and stuff. Now, why are, we, why are we doing all this time to make our own engines? So for CD Projekt Red to be all like, hey, guys, we're finally doing that. It's just like, well, it's about time you're like 10 years late on that. Uh, pretty much. Um at this point it feels like if you're if you, if you started with Witcher 2 you made what you called the red engine and it didn't work so you rebuilt it for Witcher 3 <clears throat> which you called the red engine but it didn't work so you rebuilt it for Cyberpunk 2077 and it didn't work it feels like you should have learned a little bit before that point yeah. that this, you're not good at building engines so like yeah like these companies that actually make a good chunk of money off of these games a lot of that is going to end up going to unreal and such which makes sense because you're using someone else's product but like are you really wasting more money doing that compared to how much money you're wasting on having your own like people make it and not even good enough and yeah and then the wasted money on i mean refunds and just bad press in general from the game being broken at release you can't just keep throwing money into the pits just because you've already thrown a, a ton of money into the pits you never know if that pit is actually ever gonna fill up enough for you to walk over it that's called the sunk cost fallacy yep yeah and and, and like if they're starting over for again it's like they're throwing money into the pit then digging the pit back out and throwing more money into yeah. it yeah <laughs> i mean like that could be true depending on how long people are working there. Like, you could have gotten rid of the people who worked on the last one so they can't even tell the new people, like, hey, don't make the same mistakes. One would hope that there would be documentation, but I've known enough coders <laughs> to know that there was no documentation. The only documentation <laughs> is the screw you at the very top. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, uh, in this the, the, this article that they have, they, they pulled another bit from that twitter thread where uh, a user asks so what does a triple a studio mean when they claim from scratch engine rewrites every game was there no reuse of core level systems like containers math libs gfx abstractions etc etc or was it a blank slate what does it mean what do you mean by scrapped and rebuilt bart said 
all of the ones you listed were scrapped between Witcher 2 and Witcher 3. And between Witcher 3 and Cyberpunk 77. Even streaming, script system, literally everything. Although, some parts of the renderer, funnily enough, actually stayed. So, they literally were basically, like, starting from scratch every game. So, as you said, yeah, they didn't have a red engine. They had the Witcher 2 engine, and then the Witcher 3 engine, and then the Cyberpunk 77 engine. For those those of you that might not have much knowledge of, like, what a game engine means, it's basically that they had to reinvent gravity, light, so many of, of, of these things from scratch every single time that they made a game. Like Physics. like model rigging for for the NPC movement and skeleton like recreating yeah. how the world works. It's a super complex thing, and it's so much better just to have one that already works. That so many other companies are all like, "Yeah, this is good enough. I'm gonna make my game using this system." Yeah, that's proven to work because how many games are built on Unreal? Yeah, almost all of them at this point. I mean, Unity's pretty good too, but. It's yeah. like Unity is for the ones that don't require as much uh, gra- full-on physics graphics. And... I'd say, yeah, the ones that don't try to go yeah. super realistic with your like ray tracing and all of that craziness. Yeah. So I would say, for my take on this, like, kind of a bomb that it took them so long to get here but kind of v bomb that apparently witcher 4 will work when they release it so yeah that's my thing it's like yay. it's not necessarily the bomb but or a bomb it's just like yeah why is it just now news <laughs> yeah. and i don't think i mean there's nothing else in our documents i don't think that we have any other cool news no i tried looking for something and it's just who cares you guys thought that there's like a qm oled screen or something and i don't know what, does what, that, it does. what does that even mean <laughs> yeah <sighs> I, I love it it was just all like look at these numbers and words that i have no idea what it what it does <laughs> oh boy anyways if you're excited for that good for you <laughs> Please explain what any of it means to us, because we have no idea. <laughs> the QD OLED panel. OLED panel. I mean, OLED is optical light emitting diode, right? It's O is optical. So is QD like quality? <laughs> well, it's probably like quantum dynamic or something silly like that. Oh, it could be. I mean, I'm pretty... There are QLEDs, and... OLEDs and there there's like quantum led which I don't know what it means. I tried reading into it when I was buying my new television and I went I don't know what this means. Oh, here's something so. I understand. It says that they can appreciate the blisteringly fast 0.1 millisecond response time at 175 hertz refresh rate. Those are numbers I, I know what that means. I, I know what a hertz refresh rate is. Yes. And I know what a millisecond response time is. It's, it's pretty related to the refresh rate. Yes. So it's fast. If you want a it's... monitor that is fast, you want the QD, the QT Pi OLED. What? I, I mean, normal, normal hertz refresh rates are are sixty hertz and one twenty hertz are like what what most. Yeah, I think my monitors are one twenty. Maybe. <laughs> Yeah, I think my 4K monitor does 120. I, I'm, amusingly, I think my 4K television only does 60. But I'm not sure if a television get... really needs to be. Well, but I mean, kind of, because I only just use it for PlayStation 5 anyway. Yeah, but like even so, like comparison, a TV to a monitor, they're both 4K, but the monitor is going to look a lot better just because the pixels are still smaller. Cyber. What? Can you hear me? Hello? <laughs> are, are you back? I'm fine. I Can you hear me now? I, I lost you. I was here the whole time. I could hear you. Anyways, That'll yes, be but uh, interesting edit. the TV, <laughs> like, even though it has the same amount of pixels as the monitor, but it's bigger, so the monitors are going to look better because the pixels are smaller. I don't think that's how... St- it, is that how that it works? It is how it works. The 4K is 4,000 like, 
pixels kind of thing. Well, yeah, but I mean, I have a 4K monitor and a 4K television, so they're 4K. So. Yeah, so they have the same amount of pixels. It's just that the televisions are spread wider because it's a bigger television. They're a bigger screen. I clearly have no idea how this works. Well, you know, if you play a Game Boy game on a computer monitor, or do you stretch it out on a TV, and you'll see a huge difference. Basically thought... the same thing. Yeah, uh, sure. <laughs> I, anyway, I that guess. is, I thought that had, that I thought is that was... uh, hardware news. Yeah, I was like, I thought it was... You know what, it's not even... Us dragging out my confusion out over how resolutions and pixels work is... You're right, let's just move on. <laughs> trust me, I'm an IT. Uh, for some reason, that makes me trust you less. I don't know why. <laughs> because I know how to get people to stop talking. <laughs> yep. Just BS your way through it. Yep. So that <laughs> that is all the news we have. Now let's move on to what we've been playing in the past week. What have you been playing other than Kirby Forgotten Lands? <laughs> well, Haley and I had Go Kill Chaos and Fallen Fantasy Stranger of Paradise. I know we talked about it last week because it came out that week. Well, now I get to talk about it this week because we actually played it and we beat it. In a week. So, so bad news. It only took us 20 hours to beat the game. Is that bad I mean, news? <laughs> maybe not for you, but to, to <laughs> us it was all like... It was great. I wish there was more. So, so this game allows... It's uh, mission-based where you uh, choose missions. There's story missions, and there's also side quests that you unlock it when you unlock different areas. And so that's the way you can try to keep leveled up to get onto the main missions. And it is multiplayer, so like you can create an online room, invite a friend or two friends, because there's three people in a party, and then you can play together. And what I'm so of... glad that it's not like Crystal Chronicles. First of all, yes. Oh my goodness. Did because they... like I was worried about that. We we started it out, and so like one person makes the room. They choose what mission we're going to play, and then we we go into the mission. And so what happens is that we just both do the mission, and it's complete. And then we go through cutscenes and such and then we can move on to the next mission it's not like crystal chronicles where all it does is unlocks the story stuff for the person who was in charge of the team so we don't have to do the missions like twice in order for both of us to continue on good good yeah. and it, so is it like thank you as far as mission selection is it more along the lines of the crystal chronicles like pick pick from a list or is there like a hub like a like a monster hunter style hub city slash thing or what so, is, how do, how's it set up so it's basically just set up as a map where you can see the locations and they try to like put missions where it's like oh yeah there's totally a forest here and a mountain there it's so it's the overworld map of the first game Except it doesn't really follow it that much, <laughs> but and then when uh when I start a party and it choose I can choose what mission, then it just does a drop down list of it, which is honestly a lot better because then I can see what new side quests there are instead of having to go to every single location and say, hey, is there a new side quest here? It's um, way better than just scrolling around the map, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, so, so I it's... mean, there's still some side quests and post game stuff to do. Uh, and eventually there's probably going to be more like main story missions because they have a season pass that was included in the deluxe edition I got. <laughs> now is Cause... it is it a yeah. um is it a like remake of the first Final Fantasy, like a sequel to the first Final Fantasy? Like what's its connection? So it is I want to say like it has similarities to the first Final Fantasy like Dissidia does cuz Dissidia also takes a lot of the lore of the first fall fantasy and that's basically what it is it's it's, like it's located it's located in the first fall fantasy world it's lore of it you're gonna have to play it to figure out does it actually follow the first game story completely or not 
Who is the stranger of paradise? <laughs> yeah, who are these strangers? Yeah, because I mean, in the original Fall of Fantasy, the Warriors of Light were actually people that just were strangers to this area. They arrived on a ship, and they're just all like, "Oh, I guess we're the Warriors of Light." Guess we're saving the world then. Cool. <laughs> yeah, uh, the game is a lot of fun. Uh, there's five characters, and you can choose which. Oh, we got the main character Jack, and then you got the four other characters. So you can decide which of two of the four other characters are in the party, and it's three person party. It has you the, said. Yeah, and then also there's there's five characters, and it's four warriors of light. So, huh, what's going on there? One of them's the stranger. <gasps> also, that was, that was actually something brought that up. They're all like, "One of you must be an imposter," and they're all like, "No, <laughs> no, no, uh, a what?" Who me? No. Um, is it like similar to the first Final Fantasy where each character can be technically any class, or is each, or is it more like a modern Final Fantasy where the characters are more like set to an archetype? So they they have job classes. Unlike the first game where you specified at the very beginning what class they're going to be. Uh, this is one where you can actually switch. Okay. So you if you il- unlock basic classes by just uh, eventually finding a weapon correlated to it. Like if you eventually get uh, Ronin by finding a katana and etc. like that. And you're actually able to switch between two classes by just pressing the triangle button. That allows you to be able to like, oh, well, why would I ever want to use a white mage if like I can't do much outside of the healing magic? Well, Boom! You can have uh, axe user as your second class to switch between. That's that ended up being what I did. I had a powerful magic class I mostly used for healing, and then I would switch to the axe user for actual for... damage. Yeah, I mean that makes sense. That's a <laughs> tactical way of approaching that. Yeah, and it was really cool having Haley and I both playing. It would have been awesome to have a third person. Even instead, we just had a NPC person. Who ended Walk up around useless. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there was like one time where they took out Emmy by themselves. I was like, oh, good job. You did something. <laughs> oh, good good computer. Yeah, and then, you know, typical RPG, you can level up the classes, which then uh, gives you like a board that you can like get better combo finishers or Sphere grid. stats. And also like the basic classes can unlock a second class and then the second class has kind of like a third class you know which are the best ones then so like a mage turns into a black and white mage and the black and white mage can lock the sage which allows you to be able to switch between black and white magic as one class instead of devoting one of your triangle switches to one or the yeah. other and it's cool stuff like that uh, i think it was <laughs> More of a, also, a more of an action RPG. Oh yeah, so like it has similar combat to like the warrior style game. I forget the proper term for that. Muso. Ex- yeah, except that instead of having you know the typical giant army of crappy characters, it's just s- strong individual monsters that you're fighting, or a horde of them, and then it's terrible because you're just getting hit by like five enemies at once. <laughs> And so it's it's really cool. Like I remember before the game came up, you we were all like, "Oh, it's like Dark Souls combat," and I don't get that whatsoever. It's like, "Oh, I can dodge an enemy attacks and then attack them back." Oh, it must be a Dark Souls game. Well, yeah. Well, you see, all games that are action games are Dark Souls games now. Yeah. So like the game is hard. Uh, we definitely wouldn't have been able to beat it on normal difficulty if we weren't playing together. Because if you're playing by yourself and you lose all of your health, you just instantly die. If you're playing with another person and you lose all your health, they can use one of their potions to revive you. Or you have three Phoenix Downs between the two of you, or three of you, to use. I don't love that trend in, in modern games with the, like, the, the, the quote-unquote player character has to stay alive. Yeah, as opposed it's like, to... are you... Why can't one of the NPCs come and revive me? Why do I have party members then? What 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 are they doing? I can revive them, but they can't revive me. Why? Yeah, and like it was still challenging. Like there was some, there was a boss that took us like ten tries to defeat. It's ridiculous. But yeah, I can imagine playing by myself. It's just like, oh boy, it's difficult, but for not that great of a reason. It's just because if I get hit three times, I 
die and that's it. <laughs> There's not much you can do to prevent that. Yeah, and like, you know, there is block or there's a soul shield where, oh yeah, they have like a break bar where even if you block attacks that they deal enough damage, technically your break bar goes down and so you like are on the ground basically, you can't do anything until it refills. It's uh, Final Fantasy 13, right? Did it, have no, the, did it introduce the break bar? Oh yeah, I guess. So yeah, enemies have that too. And then if you break their break bar, you can just instantly kill them, which is really nice. Oh, that's handy, as opposed to it just causing you to do additional increased damage. Yeah. And so like, a lot of the fun though was doing the combos. You know, you got the one, you got the light and heavy attacks, where the heavy attack changes depending on how many light attacks you do initially. And then you can unlock more combo finishers. The last one I got with the axe, it does like a giant earth attack that goes far forward. And I was just killing monsters instantly with it. Fair enough. Anyway, anyway I highly recommend it. Uh, the only issue is just I thought it could have been longer. And also, it wasn't cringe enough. It's cringe. So like I described last week that, no. <laughs> that cutscene where he pulls out the phone and plays Limp Biscuit. That never, that never happens again. But it did at least actually happen in the game. It did happen, yes. Good. But, like, we wanted more of that. There was some other stuff that was like that. There was also a lot of just, like, bro awesomeness between the party. But otherwise, like, no, man, we need more cringe. Just, this is not cringe. Just, just be ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. It was like, it, it kind of felt like they had an idea for the game. And then they were all like, oh, actually, we're going to switch it to this. Like... After that cutscene, basically, uh, it it's a it's a bait and switch. They they have this this one cutscene to sell it, and then everybody who buys it for that cutscene, it's not what you're getting. Except that's really weird because I I would have figured that more people would be uninterested because of that cutscene than interested. I mean, in t- I'm just weird. <laughs> I don't know. In today's society, who knows anymore? But yeah, it's it's still great. The what ends up happening at the end was exactly what I thought was going to happen. So, like, if you know much about Fall Fantasy, you're probably going to be all like, oh yeah, this is totally going to happen, and then it does happen. Giant Space Flea. Yes. <laughs> you are absolutely correct. So, yeah, it, it was it was super great. I still want to play it more. Uh, sadly, two of the trophies to get Platinum Trophy involved being the game and the chaos mode which was a uh, harder difficulty unlocked after the being the game and so Hilly and I are all like <laughs> maybe not yeah no so what have you been playing uh i tunic uh which also released last week uh Kate was on uh it was last week two weeks ago i don't remember it was recently <clears throat> yeah it was last Sorry. week uh came out uh on uh pc game pass which i have I was playing that, and I nice. really like it to the point. I mean, it was only it was only like twenty or thirty bucks, so I ended up just buying it nice. anyway for when I do plan on playing it. Yeah, I'm I'm at the point where I'm looking at it like I need to f- finish my playthrough. I'm very close to the end, and then I'm tempted to get in on the ground floor for putting together speed runs of the game because it was it's just that fun to actually play. I bet it would be cool doing a speed run. So, like, the 15 minutes prior to us recording this, I, I ended up turning it on and playing it for nice. a bit. So, I thought it was cool. It's like, oh, yes, running around this cutesy area, fighting monsters with a stick, trying to figure out where on earth to go. And it's like, you know, just the beginning itself, it's like, technically, there's one direction you need to go, but... You, could, you don't have take... to go that direction. <laughs> I mean... You kind of do. I think I Actually, do. Now that I, think of it. I literally couldn't go anywhere else. It, like you have to go to those woods. You you do end up, uh, pretty early on in the woods, picking up a sword that then allows you to cut trees and stuff. Weird. Okay. Um, yeah. You can't cut trees with a you stick. You cannot sadly. cut trees with a stick. It's cannibalism or something. <laughs> cannibalism. Um, but you once once you're able to cut trees and stuff, it really opens up, and you can kind of just go places. And, yeah, and if you know where to go, I bet it'd be pretty cool. It'd be like the Zelda 1 and yeah. 2 trying to 
do those. Like the se- quote-unquote sequence breaks where there's like the clearly intended route. And that's what I like about it is there's a lot of cool exploration, again, like Zelda 1 and, and 2. Uh, if you have already played the game and done some exploring, you can, again, sort of do sequence break which isn't really sequence break because technically you can do that. If you had explored hard enough, you might have found like, oh, wow, this path was hidden behind here that I know because I I came out of there this way, but I I could Uh. have always gone in there backwards. I just didn't know it was there until I came out. So far, the only hidden paths I found just led to a chest full of what I assume is currency. Yeah there's a lot of that and and that's because those are the hidden <clears throat> paths that you're meant to find as opposed to the <laughs> hidden paths that are like really hidden and you 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 kind of only know that they're there after after you, the fact, find... you know what i mean yeah something that i find really cute is the instruction manuals that you can yes, find yes i love that aspect cuz the game does not have the whole like pause and teach you like if you press the a button you can roll if you press the a button, you'll roll it, yeah Just roll. but you can also but but eventually you might find a piece of the the manual that then tells you that press the or a button hold roll. hold the a button to it's run like... which you might ha- yes that was you might not we have didn't held know. the a button to run around i actually ended up doing that on my own but the game has nice. these these like hidden controls that normally would, for instance, be in an instruction manual or be in a very kind of ob- ob- obstructive tutorial part of the game. The game doesn't have that. The game just says, here, play. Much like an early game, either you read the instruction manual or you don't, except the game doesn't have an instruction manual, until you collect the instruction manual through play that will then teach you these things. So again, there's a quote-unquote sequence break style uh, approach there where if you already know these buttons that you can press, you can do these things before the game expects you to have found that manual that tells you you can do the thing. It reminds me of Super Metroid where they have a section where the animals teach you how to wall jump or the like the dash and jump upwards yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, which is I a think. thing that you, you always and could like, have done. But you didn't necessarily uh-huh. know that you could do that until the game tells you about it or shows it to you or teaches you. And then it turns out you could have sequence breaked if you knew yep. how to wall jump earlier. And if you were good enough because I mean, it's yeah. still hard to do. And I I find the game very fun for those exploration purposes. And the combat is engaging and there's enough to it without being like punishing or, or necessarily like hard yeah there was some enemies i found that like they attacked a lot quicker than other ones and so it was more annoying that i just had to only attack once and then run around yeah. them and, but... and part of that as well is just the whole like you need to learn enemy patterns type stuff that is how video games kind of work yeah so i didn't get that far into it. are there like any like dungeon kind of settings like zelda games or is it just all basically a overworld exploration more akin to some of the more modern style uh zelda approaches to like dungeons that are part of the overworld uh approach where you have your certain areas that are very clearly quote-unquote dungeons but you you just get to them via overworld You, you know what i'm saying yeah. Nice. Uh, are there any like actual like puzzles in it, or is it just exploration? Kind of puzzles. Not 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 your like traditional Zelda push block puzzles, but more like general figure out how to go here and activate these things and and, and put together the path that you need to take to get places. So like exploration style puzzles more than push the block to 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 this switch type of puzzles okay 
I do want to say uh, earlier today at work, I heard a coworker talking to another person. It's like, oh yeah, Tunic is out. And the go, other go, one goes, what's that? And he goes, oh, it's a Zelda ripoff. And like the way he said it, it wasn't like negatively or positively. It was just like a statement. And I was just like, it's more okay. like a Zelda homage. Like they've never been shy about the yeah. fact that it is inspired by and a love letter to Zelda style games or specifically just the Zelda series. I mean, look at look at the main character in a green tunic with a blue shield and he's got a hat and he's got a sword mm-hmm. and he runs around. Yeah. It's it's it is Zelda. But it's Zelda in a very good way. It's just yeah, it was just so weird the way he it's said it. Crazy. One thing that I find interesting, and I know you had brought this up and kind of, I was looking forward to this portion of the conversation, is the whole, like, it's Zelda and Dark Souls. It, 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 it kind of yeah. is. It's, no. It kind of is. It's, it's, I mean, I yeah, guess I it's, it's, sim- it's similar to Dark Souls style in the same way that, like, Hollow Knight is to a degree. Oh no, no! I've seen that conversation before too. They were trying to say that Hollow Knight was more Dark Souls than Metroid. It's not, Mania. but it has those elements to it because it has the whole like, if you die, you, you, Shovel Knight even is, is is an example. If you die, you drop your stuff and you have to go back and collect your stuff, and you res. Oh, like Zombie U. Uh. Zombie yes. U is Dark it's like, Souls. It's, it's the Zombie U of Dark Souls. No. Um, but it does have, like, the shrine. It ha- Minecraft. It has, it has, like, these shrines that you activate uh-huh. as you go through that are your resurrection areas when you die, which are your bonfires from Dark Souls. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of parallels and comparisons to be made. That's not necessarily saying that it is Dark Souls, because it's not. First of all, it's actually fun to play. <laughs> it's not <laughs> the kind of, like, punishing, get good, you scrub, why are you even bothering? Because it has that Zelda... It's it's all, all the combat, it's Zelda combat, it's the top down, it's based more off of that style of play. It's not overly punishing but it is enough of a challenge to be engaging. And it has the whole resurrect at the shrine and pick your stuff back up. And if you die, the stuff that you had disappears and you have to pick up the stuff that you dropped on the second death, much like Hollow Knight or Shovel Knight. Should have called it Tunic Knight. <laughs> no. Should have been called uh. Knight Tunic. Well, I, I noticed, actually, when I was playing Tunic, I went to lower the volume of it, and it was called something else was in the it? volume manager. Interesting. I forget what it was, though. I think, like, Quest was Tunic the Quest. name of it. Qu- no, Quest Tunic was 64. not in it at all. But yeah, I was just like, was this, like, an earlier name, and they forgot to Sh- Shooter game dot exe. There. I, re- I, I really like it, and... If you like Zelda style games or anything along those those lines of exploration, I mean, I highly recommend it. Yep, good stuff. I, I plan should, on definitely you should playing more of it. More of it. I, like, talking about it right now, I, I kind of want to just sit down and finish it off. It gets real interesting too. Like you know, it, it has that um, more <laughs> abstract storytelling because there's no actual dialogue there's no actual like cut scenes or anything it just it tells it tells you the story yeah. through play through the the environments that you're going through through the interactions that you have with different enemies and, and different locations and stuff it's also sometimes hard to find signs that are oh i love that a lot of the yeah First, first sign I read is yeah. all like gibberish, I but it's go, gibberish oh, cool. with arrows. So you go, well, there's probably something in that direction. I'll go look over there, and and then I can't like, go that direction. And then yeah. you you start putting together the manual, and the instruction manual is not in English. There are like 
certain phrases that are in English or it has like pictograms of like a bomb. Well, not really because there actually are no bombs in the game. It does have some fun art. Like it has the art of the fox doing a dodge With roll the a and button. then dashing. In, in there to show that it's the A button that does the, the dodge roll and the dash and stuff like that. So like this amusing to me that actually explains that there you have iframes while there's dust yep. while you're dodge rolling. So it, and, and that's what's cool is it has these it has just enough English that you don't necessarily need to translate the gibberish but I'm pretty sure the gibberish is translatable. I've just not bothered to sit down and translate it because I haven't needed to. I've understood everything that they're trying to convey to me even if it's not in words they've been brainwashing us this whole time to learn a cool. different language and I, I i know some people in different reviews had complained about that i think it's brilliant i think it's great it really i don't i don't yeah, really it draws see you in it, it. it gives you enough that you have to pay attention but not so much that it's obtuse i, I like it that's what, yeah. that's what i'm saying Well, it reminds me of like when I played Eco, and you had like the main character speaks a language, and then the girl character speaks a different language. It's like cool; they can't even understand and I can't each understand other, either and of we them. can't understand so what it they're all saying. works out. But then they translate what the evil person is saying. It's like, all right, at least I know what she's <laughs> Just saying. I'm an evil person. Neat. Because it would have been a bit hard to figure out the yeah. story without that, and. The tunic story again. There's just enough going on that I. It's it's the kind of it's the kind of don't treat your audience like idiots. Allow them to, to to piece it together. Feel like they've earned, the information, and they will be more invested. Type of situation. Yep. Yep. Um, I was trying real quick in my head to figure out a way to treat our audience like idiots in order to not have them invested and to make a joke about it, but I couldn't come up with something clever enough. Anyway, audience, this is the part where you you know, clap because we just said some genius thing. Start Good. clapping. Good, my ego is fueled. Okay, audience. I'm going to act like Dora oh, the Explorer Okay, audience, now. this is getting close to the rundown of the end of the episode. We just finished the minute recap, so you know you know that that's uh, where, the, where the show tends to stop. So what you can do... Can you find <laughs> the end of the that. show? What you can do now is uh, go on to <laughs> the Discord. Can you find the Discord? Link in the description it. below. All right, this is I I hate this. I'm mad that, that I brought this up. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank, go, thanks for listening. Go play go play tunic. And, and talk to us Discord. about tunic. And how many oh, years yeah. I've been in Can IT? Can you find how many years Iber's been involved in IT? Mm -hmm.